Here are five iPhone settings you need to turn off right now. Now, if you're on your iPhone and you just got a brand new iPhone, or if you've had it for a while, this is something that I would recommend every single person going through. There are two main categories. One is your personal privacy and settings to turn off to keep your privacy on your iPhone. And then the second one is to make sure that your phone isn't using up too much battery. Those are really two common things that I see people asking questions about and having issues with is one is your personal privacy and the other one is your iPhone battery draining too quick. I'm gonna walk you through all of those, but first hit the subscribe button down below. Really helps me out. Thanks guys. Now, the first thing we'll do is head into our settings. We'll spend the entire time in our settings in a variety of different menus. So let's scroll down and the big culprit is you can see privacy and security. Tap on that. And the very first thing I would recommend doing is going to the very bottom and you'll be able to see analytics and improvements. Now, if you tap on that, you might see all of these turned on or all of these turned off, but I would recommend disabling every single one. So you can see share iPhone analytics. You can see analytics data. This is, this is all the reports about your personal usage on your iPhone that are being shared with Apple. So just toggle that off and it will turn off basically sharing those analytics about your phone. But I would also recommend turning off share iCloud analytics, improve assistive voice features, and basically all of these. So if you want to share all your personal data with Apple, you can have them on, but I always keep all of these turned off because I want my personal data and usage of my iPhone to be private to just me. Now, another thing that we will do in a similar light is make sure that Apple is not sharing my data to advertisers so that they can track me and track my usage on my iPhone to sell me better ads. So tap on Apple advertising here. And you can see here, if you have personal ads turned on, you might be able to see this view uh, ad targeted information. Basically it says turn off personalized ads say, so that you will basically not receive any of those personal ads that Apple is you know, kind of targeting to you based on your browsing history, your app usage, your usage on your phone. Again, I would recommend turning this off. In the days of Apple advertising, Google, Facebook, all of those, you get advertised to enough and I would prefer not to share any information about my iPhone usage to advertisers. Now, we've done both of those things directly on here. Let's go back here and do other privacy things as well. So we're gonna tap on privacy and security again, but at this time, at the very top, we're gonna go to location services. So regarding privacy, you don't necessarily want to share all your analytics and your advertising data with random people, but you also don't want to share your location with either Apple or with random apps that you don't necessarily want to have access to your location. So on some of these, they request access to your location for whatever reason, and it doesn't really make much sense. You can see on here, for instance, Instagram. I don't necessarily need Instagram or Meta to know my location at any point. I can choose to tag a location on a photo or a post or something, but I have that set to never. So go through this entire list and switch everything that you are okay with to maybe while using. I would never recommend having this. Some of them are, let's say for maps, some of them have ask when basically I open up the app. Some of them have the ability to use your location whenever they want, even if the app is open or not. So again, I would make this as restrictive as possible, but the very bottom, let's tap on system services. And you can see everything with that kind of purple uh, compass arrow indicates that it is user location really recently. And the gray one indicates that it's user location within the last 24 hours. So on a lot of these, you can see on some of these, you might want to keep open, but in-app browsing, calibration, um, you can see setting time zone, share my location. A lot of these I would recommend turning off. So you might want to keep some of them on, like find my iPhone if you use the find my iPhone, or you might want to turn on cell network search so you can get the best cell network wherever you are. But again, I would recommend turning a lot of these off and a big one is significant locations. 
So on here, basically your iPhone will track where you go to often and it will track it onto your phone and potentially share that with other apps or Apple. So if you have that turned on, I would just recommend turning it off completely and making sure you hit clear history here to delete out any of those old records. So now we've walked through a couple different things in here and we need to make sure that both your analytics, your Apple advertising, your location is set to private, but I also recommend your browsing history and your browsing usage be very private. So let's go back here, tap on apps at the very bottom, and then we will scroll down until we get to Safari. So I usually use Safari, but if you use Google Chrome, you're gonna do the same thing on Google Chrome. Let's open up Safari. You can see here, there are a number of different things that I will do if you go towards the bottom. You can see privacy and security. You can see prevent cross-site tracking, I have turned on. Hide IP address, I would re recommend hiding your IP address from the trackers. And then you can see here fraudulent website warning is turned on and not secure connection warning. And then you can choose highlights or not. But essentially, you don't necessarily want to share your information. You don't want to share your cookies. You don't want to share tracking information to a variety of different websites. Again, this is often used to advertise to you. For instance, if you Google you know, a new baby doll and then you go to Facebook and then it advertises a baby doll that you might want to buy and you're thinking, how does it know that I just Googled a baby doll? And on here, it's because this prevent cross-site tracking prevents it from detecting that, hey, I searched on this app or this website for something, and then it prevents it from being able to track it to another app like Facebook. All right, so we've done all of these different things, and this is a really good start to help to reduce your privacy kind of slipping out from your phone to adver other advertisers, Apple, all that stuff. However, I would also recommend doing a couple of things to help your battery life because essentially there are a couple of things that are turned on that will quickly drain your battery. So let's tap on general here and a really big culprit is background app refresh. This is kind of privacy and kind of battery. So you can tap on it. I have it set to completely off. So if you have it Wi-Fi and cell data, if I go back here, Essentially, this is allowing every single app that's turned on here to run different data, to collect data, to refresh their feed, all of that stuff, while I'm not even using those apps, which I think is a privacy restriction, but also drains your battery. So just let's hit this off. And now whenever you open up an app, you can refresh it, but otherwise it won't be using data and doing things in the background that you don't want it to do. Now, the last thing that I would recommend doing is let's go back here, scroll to the very bottom and we're gonna hit on apps. And then we will scroll down until we get to mail and then mail accounts here. Now, a couple of things you can see at the very bottom is fetch new data. If you have this turned on and push turned on. Essentially what this is going to do is it's going to allow all of your email from Gmail, Yahoo, MSN, whatever to be pushed over to your phone. Again, this takes up a lot of battery life and it constantly is refreshing. So I would recommend turning this off. And then on any of these different ones, I would switch the fetch to manual. Fetch is essentially your iPhone connecting to the servers uh, you know, whatever, you know, every 30 minutes, every 15 minutes, or I just set it to manual. So push is pushing it from the server over to your phone to get new emails. Fetch is your phone requesting new emails to get to your phone. But again, you don't necessarily need that. All you need to do is open up the email app here and it will refresh. This is a, something that saves a lot of battery, constantly pushing or constantly fetching new email will use up and drain your battery life on your iPhone. So those different things related to privacy and the battery life of your iPhone is something that I always do. I have every one of my family members do and is really important to do when you first get an iPhone or if you've had an iPhone for a while. I hope this helps. If it did, hit the like button down below and leave a comment if you still have any questions. Thanks guys.